Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya'i wal mursalin. Sayyidina wa habibina wa syafi'a wa syafi'ina wa nuri qulubina wa qurrati a'inina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa bari wa salim wa ina ta'alluma wa ta'ani wa tazakura wa tazkir wa naf'a wa lintifa' wa lifada wa listifada wa lhasa ala tamasuki bi kitabillahi wa sunati rasulihi sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa salam wa du'a ila al-huda wa dalala ala khair ibtigha'a wajhillah wa maradatihi wa qurbihi wa thawabihi Subhanahu wa ta'ala ma'a lutfin wa afiyatin Birahmatika ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma nizkal alma ladunni mushrib as-safi al-hani Ya wahab, ya ghani Allahumma nizkal alma ladunni mushrib as-safi al-hani Ya wahab, ya ghani Allahumma nizkal alma ladunni mushrib as-safi al-hani Ya wahab, ya ghani Wa sallallahu ala sidana muhammadin Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Amin Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah We continue with our fiqh And I think last week I I said <coughs> that I am going to go into more detail about number 12 over here. Right? I said that I'm going to go into more detail right, because of a specific situation about the Fatiha. Right? So, we are going to, so for today, I don't know why is my mouse not drawing. Oh, it's white. Okay. Right, so, for today, we're going to go specifically into number 12. Right? And then, um, <coughs> quickly, we're going to go into the next into the next uh, part of the book, inshallah. Okay, I'm going to share the whiteboard. The whiteboard. Uh, no. Okay. Okay. Hmm. One second, I'll share the whiteboard. Let me share. Let me share. Oh, whiteboard, sorry. Okay, no. Okay, I'm going to share. Okay, so you, I hope you, can, you all can see the whiteboard. Okay. About delaying the intervals, eh? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, so the situation here that I'm going to speak about is about Fatiha, all right? So when when basically the question is when must I finish the Fatiha, and when can I stop the Fatiha halfway <coughs> and continue with the Imam? So it's basically talking about someone who must book, right? So when they must book, right? Uh, whether they can, uh, you know, what what is the story about the about the must book? So the first thing, uh, the first thing first is that. Right, so um, the first so I'm, I'm gonna go by I'm gonna buy questions, eh? Right, so when when something happens to you, right, you think to yourself, right, where do you where do you actually fall, and then you think to yourself, do you do you have to complete your fatiha or not complete the fatiha? So the first thing you have to do is to actually define who is the masbuk, right? <coughs> okay, so the def def definition the masbuk. Okay, who is the masbuk? Right, it is. The person who enters the prayer and does not have enough time to recite the Fatiha. Okay, who enters the masbuk is the person who enters the prayer, right, the prayer of an imam, eh, with an imam or behind an imam. And does not have enough time. To recite the Fatiha. So this happens in two, two scenarios. The first scenario, right? The first scenario. And let's put it in there. Right, and this is by two scenarios. Okay, what are they? The first one is that he enters the prayer while the Imam is still standing. Right, he enters the prayer while the imam is still standing, um, and uh, uh, what, 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 okay, he enters the prayer while the imam is standing, and he um, immediately begins by reciting the fatiha. Okay, by the fatiha, right, meaning uh, without reciting doa iftitah. If tita no ta'awuz. What is ta'awuz? Ta'awuz is a'awuz billahi minash shaitani rajim.
Okay. So basically without reciting any sunnah. I.e. Doa iftah no ta'awuz. So by reciting the fatiha, basically wajib. Not only the wajib. I.e. from bismillah. From, from, from bismillah. Because bismillahirrahmanirrahim is part of surah fatiha. Right, so he, he enters the prayer. The imam is standing. Straight away when he's going, he goes, Allahu Akbar, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Okay, he's, he has ended the prayer. The imam is still standing. He goes right into his fatiha. He goes straight into his fatiha. Alright? Um, uh, he doesn't do any, any sunnahs at all. That's the first example of a masbuk. The second example of a masbuk, right, is that uh, he enters the prayer. The imam is in ruku. Okay, uh, so this, so this is basically the masbuk who actually got the rakaat. Okay, well, I'm not going to speak about masbuk that came after the chance to recite surah fatiha. So if you all come, if the masbuk came in at sujud or sitting down or any other part of the prayer, then uh, this for the imam because there is no there is no uh, catching the rakaat already. We're talking about those who enter the prayer and they are able to get the rakaat. Right, so beyond ruku'a, there is no discussion. Because beyond ruku'a, you can't get the rakat. You have to, you have to just follow the imam, the rakat is not counted for you. And then the, the following rakat is counted for you. Alright, All right, so here is the prayer, the imam is in uh, ruku'a. Okay, so for the first person, right, for the first person, right, what should he do? Right, for the first person, right, when the imam uh, takbir to move into ruku'a, he must stop his fatiha wherever wherever he is at and ruko with the imam. Okay, he needs to stop the fatiha wherever he is at and ruko with the imam because he is must book. Right? Hence, the imam. Carries, you see, carries his fatiha. Right? And the raka'at is counted for him. I see, actually, later on, I want to also discuss, I want to just clarify uh, some things about masbuk. Like, apparently, it's a, it's a big misconception in our community of really what does it mean to masbuk. Right? Some people think that, that, let's say, if I come in at the, at the second raka'at, that means I miss the first raka'at. So they, they actually count it as their last rakaat is the first rakaat. No, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> right? So I'll, I'll, go, I'll go through and then any questions you okay, can clarify with me. Right? Um, like what does it mean? What does it mean to masbuk? <laughs> like what, what, what does masbuk actually mean? You know, when, when like, whichever rakaat I come in, like what does it mean <laughs> from that point on? Okay. Um, now, so hence the imam carries his fatiha and the rakaat is counted for him. Right? He counts that rakaat. Okay, the second, the second scenario is easier right, because you come in, in Ruku, right? So all he has to do is um, right, he needs to takbir, right, takbir right, while standing, right, hold the standing for Tumat Nina, right, Tumat Nina, right, no reading of anything. Right, doesn't have to read anything at all because the Imam Dada is already in Ruko. So you don't read anything at all. Eh? Then you hold, hold, hold the standing of Fatumat Nina. Right? It means for, for, for a moment. You're holding hold the standing for a moment. Right? Then um then move into Ruko. Right? Move into Ruko. Right? He if he gets Ruko to the level of Tumat Nina. Right, with the imam, he got the rakaat. Okay? Otherwise, he missed the rakaat. And just continue with the imam. Then after, then at the end, make up that. Make up one more rakaat. Okay, so for example, uh, the Imam already in Ruko. Right, you come in. You see the Imam is in Ruko. Okay, you come in, you must tuck bare standing. You cannot move into Ruko straight away. You must tuck bare standing. 
Well, that is a condition of our prayer, right? So, takbitul ihram must happen while you are standing. It must. Right? So, you come in. Right? You, Allahu Akbar. Okay, while standing. Hold it for the matnina. Then, Allahu Akbar, you ruku'ah. You and the imam must both be in ruku for the level of Tumat Nina. Alright? And then you, you, you have gotten the rakaat. Rakaat is yours. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Come, that's rak- is your rakaat. Okay, but if you go, you come, you come in, you go, Allahu Akbar, you're standing. When, you, when you're about, when you're moving down to ruku, you're going, Allah, Sami Allah, Liman Hamidah. Ah. So you're, you're on your way down. <laughs> and you haven't reached ruku yet. The imam already Sami Allah, Liman Hamidah. Because you don't know how long the imam was in Ruko. Right? You keep me so he was in Ruko. Right? So you, don't, you don't know how know how long he's been there. Right? So so you're trying to get him in Ruko, but he already said Allah Allah Muhammad before you even got down. Or like while well, well, you got down, Allah Akbar, you just got down and he said Allah Allah Muhammad. And there was no Tumat Nina. Right? You, you, did, you, were not, you were not both together in Ruko for a level of Tumat Nina. Uh, it didn't happen. Right, so, so, so you see, oh, the imam got up already. <laughs> right, right, just about the ruko, imam got up. Uh, which is why it's a sunnah for the imams, yeah, for those who, who are imams. It's a sunnah that if you sense someone came into the room or someone is going to pray with you, right? So like, for example, if I pray my husband, unless he's in a, he's in a hurry, he will say he, he start first. So for me, like, my telekong and everything, right? So, so like, like he, he will say he start first. He start first, like, I, 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 I will must well join in. So it's sunnah for the imam, that if I haven't come into the prayer yet, uh, and he already moving into ruko, uh, he should wait for me in ruko. <laughs> it's sunnah. If the imam senses somebody is in the room and that person is going to pray with, with, with you, uh, and you're in the ruko, uh, you should wait. You should wait in the ruko until you sense the person has already come into ruko and they have reached to Matnina with you. Then you send me Allah Holy Man Hamidah. Right, just to let them get the raka'at lah. Because they're not right. They, I mean, the poor thing. They just came into the prayer. And then, then you go and say, Allah, Holy Man, Hamidah. And they're like, Allah, I miss the raka'at. <laughs> you know, subhanAllah. Right, so it, um, for the imam to actually know to do that. Same thing also at the end of the prayer. If the imam is at a tahiyah. And the imam, you know, uh, can hear someone come into the room. And they want to join you in your prayer. You know, uh, you can sense that someone came in. Right, there is a sunnah for you to, for the imam to hold the tahiyah. Right, to, to, to keep the position. Until that person joins you in the prayer, and then the imam can salams. So at least the person got a part of jemaah, right? They got some part of jemaah, not the whole jemaah. Eh? It's not there's the whole jemaah. They got some part of jemaah. <laughs> you know, mashallah, a lot of you don't realize that if you whatever you get in jemaah, that is what you get. The part that you put as yourself, the reward is 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 a lone a lone reward. <laughs> it's not come there as jemaah. Like if you get like if you say when you get the last tahiyah of the imam. You only get the pahala of that, the reward of that tahiyya in jama'ah. Thereafter, if you get up, you want to finish your prayer, right? You get up and you pray a few more rakas to finish your prayer. It all counts as individual prayer. <laughs> There's no more jama'ah. <laughs> so you don't actually get the pahala of times 27. There's no times 27 after the imam has finished. <laughs> right? Unless someone, someone comes in and then they pray jama'ah with you, which can be done as well. I wish you on, I will, I, will, I, will, I will explain a little bit about that if you all want to. You know, uh, guard over jemaah. Okay, this is basically what it is about the mazbuk. Right, so two scenarios, this and that. Okay, this is let's say. Okay, let me go back to, to, to scenario, scenario number one. Eh, scenario number one, right, is basically you know, put a star here, right? The makmum, the makmum, um, does not know where the imam is in his recitation. Okay, the mamum does not know where the imam is in the Basically, it's a quiet prayer. The mamum came in, the first scenario, the mamum came in, the imam is standing. You have no idea the imam just began or didn't just begin or the imam um, uh, reading Fatiha still or not Fatiha still. You have no clue, no clue like where the imam is. Right? So, you need to actually just start with the Fatiha so you can get your Fatiha in right, together with the imam. Right, so it does not know where the imam is in the situation. Okay, uh, situation. Let me just. I'm, I'm going to explain more. Number one, because number two easy. Number two is an easy situation. Number one. Right, if right, makmum knows where the imam is, for example, and uh, it's a loud prayer. Right, so it's, it's an out loud prayer. You can hear the imam reading fatiha, right? And uh, you can hear the imam. It's, it's, it's not. A, it's not only only for silent prayers. You, you don't know where the imam is at. Uh, you, you can't tell if he has finished fatiha or not. An out loud prayer, you can hear him, right? So, for example, if you know where the imam is, for example, can hear the imam reading fatiha, 
Naik so, makmum. Makmum, uh, listen to imam first, of course. And this makmum is not counted as a masbuk. Now, you're not counted as a masbuk. Like why? Because you came in, the time to read Fatiha had not come in yet. Because you're supposed to read Fatiha after the Imam finished Fatiha, right? For a loud prayer, the Imam is supposed to read first. Imam Amin finished Fatiha, then you begin your Fatiha. So whether or not you were in the prayer from the beginning, or you were in the prayer at any point in time the Imam was still doing Fatiha, you are not Masbuk. Right? Because you came in, it was not time to read Fatiha yet. Right? It's not time to read Fatiha yet. You are not counted as Masbuk. Right, because you keep you, you are like the guy, like, 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 like the people who were there from the from the first takbir. You're the same place as them, right? Because none of them has have begun their fatiha yet. So you came in the imam, even the imam was going wala malin, and you came in at that point. You are in the same position as all the people there, right? Who were there from the first takbir with the imam, same because you all start the same. You all start fatiha together. Correct? You all start together, you all start fatiha to, when the imam said, Amin. Then now all the makmum will start their fatiha. Correct? So which means you're not masbuk. It's important to know whether you are masbuk or not masbuk. Because masbuk, you're allowed to actually stop fatiha halfway and continue with the imam. For non-masbuk, you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> you cannot stop fatiha halfway and continue with the imam if you are not a masbuk. Okay? I hope you understand that part. Eh? Okay. So now, now let me put it as well as star. Okay, All right. So if so, these are all like the the, the notes, eh? So the um, Mahmud does not know where the Imam is in his recitation, right? Then then he will just consider himself as a masbuk. Okay, right. So if you don't know where the Imam is, and of course you can't you can't do anything about it, right? Because you know where the Imam is, at, right? So then you you call you count yourself as a masbuk, right? Which means when the Imam uh takbir to to uh, ruku. That you stop your fatiha and you record together with the imam. Right, but if you know where the imam is at, right, then you can tell. Right, so you see, if you enter the prayer and you hear the imam reciting the end of surah ikhlas, so obviously you're a masbuk. Right? So you, you, Allah, walam yakullahu kufu, and you enter. Uh, so of course you're a masbuk lah. You're not going to have enough time to read surah fatiha. Right, because the imam was at the end of another surah. Okay, so you have to know first, understand, are you a masbuk or not? Right, uh, let me just put another one here. Eh? Masbuk. Okay, masbuk. Sorry, I'll keep putting things in. Masbuk can uh, stop Fatiha halfway and Ruko with Imam. And uh, Imam carries Fatiha, his Fatiha. Okay? It's all about the Fatiha. The whole masbuk situation is all about the Fatiha. Right? Do I have to continue Fatiha or not? Okay. So now, okay, now we're finished this part. Eh? Okay, so now I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move on. No, I, okay, one more I have one more situation about the, the, the about scenario number one. Okay, one more situation is what if what if the masbuk begins to do sunnas? Okay, let me just put the fish the, another star here. Right. What if masbuk did sunnas uh, even if it's accidentally so the masbuk came in and uh, the masbuk doesn't know where the imam is at right um the masbuk begins by saying uh allahu akbar kabira walhamdulillahi kathira wa subhanallahi bukrata wa asila or the masbuk begins by saying a'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim right uh, so there's a, there's a sunnah that was that was recited so the masbuk actually spent time reciting sunnah when he could just do wajib Right, so instead of spending that time to do Fatiha, the Masbuk as she did Sunnas. At first, then the Masbuk began Fatiha and the Imam Ruko pula. Right, so the Masbuk spent the whole time doing Dua Iftitah and then finish the Ta'awus. Then the Masbuk are Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Imam Ruko. Imam Allahu Akbar Ruko. So Masbuk, right, you could have done the whole Fatiha or Masbuk. Right, because you, spend, you go and spend time doing Sunnas, now you have no time for your Fatiha. Uh, for this kind of Masbuk, Okay, for this kind of masbuk, right, they must, okay, uh, he or she must 
continue reciting uh, Fatiha long enough to uh, long enough to cover the time he spent doing the sunnas then he can stop and ruku with the imam if he gets the ruku with tumanina with the imam he gets the rakaat otherwise he does not okay Right, so now, okay, so so now, Masbuk, okay, so for example, eh, Masbuk comes into the, 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 the prayer. It's a quiet prayer, he has no idea where's the Imam. Okay, so again, he's, you must always understand, are you this in the same place as the people who were there from the beginning? Or are you on a different place? So he comes to the, I'm going to give two scenarios. He comes to the prayer, silent, silent prayer, has no idea where is the Imam. Okay, so he says, A'udhu bil, automatic, eh, so come, Allahu Akbar, A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim. Okay, that is equal to one ayat in Surah Fatiha. Okay, that is more or less one ayat in Surah Fatiha. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. He ends Surah Fatiha. Okay, when he was, when he just recited Maliki Yawmiddin, Imam Allahu Akbar Ruku. Okay, the Imam Ruku at this point. So what does he have to do now? He has to read one more ayat. Of Surah Fatiha, then he can join the Imam in Rukuah. Because he spent one ayat doing, doing the A'udhu Billah. You see that? Right, so, so the moment Imam, Imam Rukuah, he cannot stop his Fatiha then and then and then join the, join, and, and Rukuah with the Imam. No, he cannot. Because he spent time doing Sunnahs. So he needs to say, so after his Maliki Amin, he must go, Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in. Uh, that is about the same length of time it takes to say, A'udhu Billah, Himna Shaitan, Mera Jim. You get it? Right, so he spent time doing A'udhu Billah Himna Shaitan Najib. So he needs to like call out that time. <laughs> he, needs to, he needs to make up for that time he spent doing sunnahs. Right, so he will have to recite Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in. And now he can stop his fatiha and he can do the with the imam. Right? If he, by the time he, he does that, and he wants to record with the Imam. Maybe the Imam's record is super fast. The Imam did one subhanallah, the Imam got up. Right? And he missed the tumma'inina with the Imam in the record. Then he missed the rakat. He actually missed the rakat. Then he has to just continue with the Imam. And at the end of the prayer, he uh, does one more rakat. Okay? Um, if he does the entire du'a iftitah. Okay? So automatic lah, automatic. He comes to the prayer. He goes, and, and he sees the Imam is a, is, is a quiet prayer. He doesn't know where the Imam is at. Then he goes, Allahu Akbar kabira, walhamdulillahi kathira, wa subhanallahi bukrata wa asila, wa jahtu wa jihil li fatra samawati wal ar, hanifa muslim wa maana min al-mushrikin, inna salati wa nusuki wa mahiyaya mamati lah rabbil alamin, la sharika lahu wa bidharika umirtu, wa ana min al-muslimin. Dua iftitah is longer than fatiha. <laughs> Dua iftitah, in those seven ayats, Dua iftitah is longer than surah fatiha. If someone could do the entire du'a iftitah in their prayer, they could have very well done Surah Fatiha. Correct? The whole du'a iftitah took the entire time of Surah Fatiha. So after he finished his du'a iftitah, or Anna Milal Muslimin, he finishes it. Then he goes, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajim, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Imam Allahu Akbar, the Rukuk. Imam Ray Rukuk already. You just say a basmala. Just say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. What does this guy have to do? He has to finish his Fatiha. No matter what, he must finish. Because he spent time reading Dua Iftitah when he is Masbuk. Uh, he's not from there. From, it's different from, 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 from the guy who was there from the beginning of the prayer. Uh, you are Masbuk. Masbuk, I must understand. You are Masbuk. Masbuk, go to Fatiha straight away. Don't spend time doing Sunnahs. Because you don't know where's the Imam you know, in, his, in his position. Uh, so you're not, you know, you're not, um, you're not aware if you have enough time for Fatiha or not. Fatiha is your priority. Fatiha is wajib. Right? So, the Imam Ruko, this person just finished Dua Iftitah, just began Surah Fatiha, <laughs> and finished Surah Fatiha, or must he do Fatiha full? Must do full Fatiha. Right? And, and high chances, you will not get the Imam in Ruko. <laughs> high chances. <laughs> By the time you finish Fatiha, the Imam will die. It's done already. <laughs> right? So, so, but you must finish it. You must because you spend time on iftitah. Right? So by the time he finishes fatiha, if the imam is still in ruku, then ruku. 
And if you get the imam in to Madinah, then Alhamdulillah got the rakat. But if the imam didn't want to wait for you in your fatiha, <laughs> and the imam got up after that, then gone. The, 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 you, don't, you didn't get the rakat. You just you just finish the fatiha, you ruko, and then you catch up with the imam. The rakat is not counted for you. Right? The rakat is uh, the rakat is is um, void. Right? The the following rakat you must go and make up one more rakat after that. Okay. Okay. What if so? The basically is basically how much you spend time doing sunnas. So if you automatically we can do if you tahu this guy. So again, he comes to the prayer. And it's all coming into the prayer. It's not continuous from the previous rakat. It's all you just came into the prayer. So this guy goes, Allahu Akbar kabira, walhamdulillah kathira. Then he remembers, eh, hey, I must book. <laughs> I'm not in the eyes, not do to do if you He stops there and then, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. He goes into the Fatiha. Right? So he's, he stops himself. He, he catches himself doing do if you He stops himself. And right? he goes into the Fatiha. So again, think how much did he actually read of do if you So if he just read Allahu Akbar kabira walhamdulillah kathira okay that's, that's about half an ayat or, or, or one ayat about so right so at the end of this so, so while he's doing this his surah fatiha if the imam ruku' so for example he said iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in uh, and the imam ruku' right so all he has to do is ihdinas sirat al mustaqim one more ayat uh, and then ruku' with the imam Okay, so to, just to make up for the amount of time he spends uh, doing the first ayat of of dua ibtita, they basically it depends on how much you have done of dua ibtita to to make up for that, to that, for that, for that time spent doing sunnas. Okay, all right. So that one is for the masbuk. Right. So first and foremost, to know if you can drop the fatiha, you must first decide are you masbuk or not. Uh, that is that is when you can drop the fatiha. If you decide, oh, I am not masbuk. Right, and how are you not masbuk? You are not masbuk by two by two scenarios. Let me, I'm gonna clear this, eh? You all, if you want to, let me just um, wait, let me make my text smaller so that you can get the entire thing in one page. Okay, you can see the entire thing. All right. So, uh, I'm, so, so you all can can screenshot if you want <laughs> screenshot. Then I will um clear. I clear. Okay, I clear. I mean, I, mean, I don't. I won't clear. I on another page. Okay, new page. Alright, so now the non masbuk situation, and this is where our our hukum comes in about being about lagging behind by more than two rukuns. Right? Because the only time you will on purpose be lagged behind is because you've not done one rukun, which is fatiha. Because fatiha is a rukun, right? So so this is for a non masbuk. Right. So now, right, if you are non masbuk, right, and who is the non masbuk, right? Right, yeah, let me just put in. Right, the non masbuk is the one who began the prayer together with the imam. Mm -hmm. I or began when the imam had not finished Fatiha yet. Right, and for the case of an for for out loud prayers. Okay, right, so either or, right, so either the Imam Takbir and you Takbir after the Imam, even if it's a slight delay, like a slight, not 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 enough for you to miss Fatiha. Like for example, you were like you were in the Telekong, the Imam Takbirs first, like within about five seconds you come into the prayer, and you're not must you're not must book, right? because the Imam have has not finished his Fatiha yet. High chances, even if it's a quiet prayer, high chances he's not finished Fatiha yet, right? So he's he's supposed to read Fatiha and the surah afterwards, right? So you're supposed to have gotten the Fatiha to in the prayer. Uh, you can you can possibly get the entire Fatiha in the prayer, okay? Right. So either situation, eh? So you come in, right? Um, you with the, together with the Imam, you you begin the takbir after the Imam, right? Uh, or slightly after, not too long after, such that the Imam has finished Fatiha, eh? So not too long after. Right. Or you come in and you can actually hear the imam is still doing his fatiha. Okay. Right. So for the for the non masbuk, right, you must must finish fatiha. No matter what, no matter what, you must finish fatiha. Must finish fatiha. And no matter what. Okay. So now scenarios. Right. Scenario one. Right. You too slow. Do you too slow or cannot 
concentrate when Imam reciting second surah. Okay, happens to people. Right, so the Imam is doing a surah, even if it's a long surah, you like not for the for, for my I cannot laugh concentrate on my Fatiha when the Imam is doing a surah. I try so hard to do Fatiha, I get so confused when the Imam is doing a surah and I try to do Fatiha, I can't do it together when the Imam is doing it. Alright. So if you are too slow, right, or you cannot concentrate when the Imam is reciting a, a second surah, right, this means that you have right, you have a valid excuse in the Sharia. Okay, this is a valid excuse in the Sharia, right? Um, uh, uh, so hence you are given till the third long rukun to catch up with the Imam, right? And this is the second sujud. I'm gonna, I want to explain the entire thing. Let me just type it out first, eh? Uh, you're, you're given till the third long rukun. To catch up with the imam, and this is the second sujud. So, for example, give me, let me give you the example. Okay, so imam, so imam uh, moves into ruko. Okay, you still in fatiha. Okay, All right. So, why are you still in fatiha? Either you're very slow, and the imam is okay. The imam is not too fast. He's actually okay, but you are very slow. Maybe a new Muslim convert, you know, uh, just learn Fatiha. So very slow in Fatiha. Um, or that uh, you couldn't focus on your Fatiha at all in the prayer because the Imam's recitation is too, too distracting, <laughs> right? So only because the, the, the Imam's Quran is too distracting. So you couldn't focus on your Fatiha. So when the Imam finishes Quran in Hiroko, now you can actually begin your Fatiha. Uh, you were not able to do it earlier on because you, you tried your best, but you couldn't do it earlier on. Okay, so you are still in Fatiha, right? So uh, continue your Fatiha. Remember that the bottom line is you must finish Fatiha no matter what. Okay, then, right, then Imam uh, gets uh, moves into Aitidal. Right, you still in Fatiha. <laughs> and maybe you, this is basically someone who has an excuse. You, might, you need to finish your fatiha as soon as possible. But if let's say you really, or the imam is so fast, or so, whatever it was, but someone or other, the imam going to Atena, you're still in fatiha. You still have to finish your fatiha. Right, continue. Okay. And then imam moves into sujud, into the first sujud. So I'm giving the, 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 the worst case scenario, okay? Hopefully, hopefully it's better than this. <laughs> right, they move into the first sujud. You still in fatiha. Why are you so long in Fatiha? <laughs> are you still there? You're still not. You're still not busy in Fatiha. <laughs> still there. I right, continue. Okay, continue. Okay. Imam sits after first sujud. Okay, after the sujud. you still <laughs> in Fatiha. <laughs> Alright, what do you do? Continue. Okay, continue. Okay, Imam moves into second sujud. You still standing down? You still thinking about Fatiha? Still in Fatiha? Alhamdulillah, kenapa lah? Why are you still there? I'm still in Fatiha. The Imam dah lah like, etidah, dah sujud, dah sit down, dah sujud. And you like, walau balin. You just reach walau balin. And the Imam is in uh, sujud, right? You must, you must finish Fatiha and move into Ruko. Of course, you don't, you don't jump steps. Eh? You're not going to jump to, to sujud together with the Imam. Don't jump. <laughs> You're supposed to move accordingly, right? So you must finish Fatiha and move into Ruko before Imam gets up from the second sujud so once you see the imam that move into the second sujud okay. uh, read a little <laughs> you better you better finish your fatiha right now uh quickly finish your fatiha and move into ruko before the imam gets up from the second sujud and you're going to do every movement for the level of tumatnina to catch up with the imam okay all right so 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 this is for someone who has an other 
Uzur meaning excuse. They really cannot do it quickly. Uh, otherwise, most people by the time the imam is there, you should be done. Then you should be, you should finish. By the time he sujud, you should be done. <laughs> you shouldn't be taking so long in your fatiha. Okay, but but if someone has really an excuse, right? Or the imam is too fast. Okay, so if either you are too slow, you can concentrate the imam in second surah. Right? Or imam is way too fast. Okay, so the imam reads, for example, eh, the imam reads fatiha. Then after fatiha, the imam reads inna atayin nega kau terpaksa li rabi on hari nasi hari nega kau abtar Allahu akbar. A three ayat super fast took two seconds to read the the three ayat. Right, <laughs> you like how am I going to get fatiha in that? I can't possibly get my fatiha where well, while the imam did his three ayat three 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 ayat surah again. Right, so again for imams, right, for imams, it's sunnah for imams that after they read surah fatiha, they are to wait. They actually supposed to have a pause before the next surah to allow for the makmum to read their fatiha. I says not to disrupt the makmum and to give them chance to read their fatiha. I says sunnah on imams. I'm going to tell the imams in your in your family sunnah for imams. After fatiha, take a pause the length of time it takes to recite fatiha. Give your makmums a chance <laughs> to read their fatiha. Okay, so it's so a pause for length of time. To recite for the makmum to read surah fatiha, the imam does continue reciting surahs but quietly, because there there should be no there should not be any part of the prayer whereby you are silent without any zikr. There should always be zikr in every part of the prayer, right? So the imam of the fatiha he can recite, for example, ayat kursi. Ayat kursi is in the Quran and ayat kursi is longer than fatiha. Right? So if he finish ayat kursi, confirm insha Allah the makmum finish the fatiha already. Right, then he begins his surah. Uh, like that, nobody's gonna panic. <laughs> nobody's gonna. Hey, the Imam finished fatiha already. Imam finished. Imam record already. Imam already. You know, then you you're gonna panic in your prayer. You don't know uh, how to catch up with the Imam. Okay. Uh, but by right lah, by right the Imam should have a pause between the fatiha and the surah to allow for makmum to finish the fatiha. But if the Imam did not do that, the Imam of the fatiha go right into the surah, do a super fast surah in two seconds, and then go and record. Record pula the Imam does Subhanallah one time, and then go and eat atidal. At the dal, he just said, "May Allah Almighty Hamid the Rabbana the Kalham." And then he go and ruko, and he go and sujud. He's super fast, so every movement is about two seconds. And you are like, like how are you trying to get your fatiha in? Okay, that one is is called you have a valid excuse. You have a valid excuse in the Sharia, right? Because Imam too fast, or you too slow, or you cannot concentrate. I said all the valid excuses in the Sharia. You are given up to the third long rukun. So this ruling here in the book that says two uh, rukuns behind the imam, uh, you cannot be more than two rukuns behind the imam, is for the one who has no excuse. Uh, it's for the one who has no excuse. For the one who has an excuse, you're given up to the third long rukun, which is the second sujud. Because the long rukuns are ruko and sujud. So ruko is the first long rukun. The first sujud is the second long rukun. The third sujud is the... Uh, sorry, the second... Oh, the ruku is the first long rukun. The first sujud is the second long rukun. The second sujud is the third long rukun. Okay, atidal is not a long rukun. Atidal is a short rukun, and the sitting between the two sujuds are short rukuns. Alright, only ruku, sujud, sujud are long rukuns. Alright, so you're given to the third long rukun. He cannot finish the sujud yet. He must still be in sujud, and you must have moved into your into your uh, ruku by then. Okay, and then and then you you do it as usual. You at the dal and then you ruko, you sujud, you sit and you sujud. Do everything to the level of tumatnina only to catch up with the imam. Everything level of tumatnina. Just subhanallah, 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 and get up, get up with the imam. Okay, alright. So this is for the one who has an excuse. Okay, I hope that one is clear. Eh? Right, if um if makmum. Has no valid excuse, right? For example, daydreaming. Oh, my mom! <laughs> right. So if my mom has no valid excuse, my mom daydreaming. Like so, the imam finish fatiha. My mom daydreaming. Daydreaming. Imam read long surah. Mashallah, imam read surah bayina, read surah qari'a, read surah read long surah. My mom daydreaming the whole time. Daydreaming. And then the Imam Allahu Akbar ruko makmum eh fatihah. <laughs> so the makmum at this point the Imam 
Want to rukuk Ready to answer the law You had every chance To do your fatihah Every opportunity To do your fatihah But you were dreaming The entire time Right So then suddenly The imam the imam uh, rukuk You're like Eh Did I do fatihah? <laughs> They say, I don't think I did fatihah. I did fatihah. They, they think no, confirm I didn't do fatihah, right? So or you don't remember doing fatihah. You like, I, but you say I do automatic fatihah. Do I did? Then you can't remember at all. Whether you did fatihah or not, because you're daydreaming. So no valid excuse, right? This is when we say, only given two rukuns to lag behind. Right? If lag behind. More than two rukuns. And it's not long rukuns, eh? Two rukuns. Two rukuns means, right? Means, uh, that means, means, means must finish Fatiha and ruku before Imam moves into sujud. Right? Because two rukun will be ruku and i'tidal. Like, ruku' and i'tidal are two rukuns. So, the imam cannot finish his i'tidal before you move into ruku'. So, you need to move into ruku' first before the imam moves into sujud. If you are still standing and the imam has moved into sujud, then now you are behind the imam by more than two rukuns. Your salat batal. Okay? Your salat batal. Like, it is nullified. Right? So, what do you have to do? Nullified. You have to restart your prayer and now you are mazbuk. You go, you Allahu Akbar, you go in the sujud straight away, you are mazbuk, you miss the first rakat. Okay, because you're daydreaming. <laughs> so, as far as that, so if you're behind the imam, I buy two rukuns. It's not long rukuns, but two two rukuns. Like that. It's two rukuns. Okay, so the two rukuns are ruku and ayatidal. Alright, so if, if you did not move into ruku before the imam moves into sujud, then you have lagged behind by more than two rukuns. Okay, right. So, uh, so if you like pay more than two rukun, right? Uh, then prayer batal. Prayer becomes prayer is nullified. A prayer is nullified and must restart the prayer right now as a must book. Okay, right. And that rakaat, of course, not counted. <laughs> Because you restarted your prayer anyway, right? You, 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 you begin your prayer again, okay? Okay, hold on, it's understood. Any questions about this? <laughs> Any questions about this? Right, so for the one who, if you are not masbuk, you are not to stop your fatiha halfway. You cannot. Only the masbuk can stop their fatiha halfway. And who is the masbuk? At the previous page, the masbuk is... The one, uh, the one who enters the prayer and does not have enough time to read the Fatiha, right? Uh, because of their late coming, they don't have enough time to read the Fatiha because of their late coming, not because the Imam is too fast or they are too slow, right? But they have, they are not able to read Fatiha because of their late coming, right, into the prayer. Whereas for the other scenario, they are not masbuk. Right, um, they came to the prayer together with the Imam, or they came to the prayer when the Imam was still doing the Fatiha, but they were not able to finish the Fatiha because the Imam is too fast or they are too slow, but it's not because of late coming. They were there on time. All right, they were there on time. Okay, hope that is uh, uh, understood. Okay, now a bit of about a bit of story about, about the Masbo. Let me just see the questions. Um, pause between Fatiha and Surah for Imam. Is it a must or just encourage? For uh, uh, it is, uh, it is a must. It is a must for the Imam to recite something in that pause because any um any gap in the prayer whereby something is not recited will cause for the prayer to be invalid. Uh, it cause for the prayer to be invalid. So you cannot for the imam for the imam for the makmum all your pauses are because you're listening to the imam or you're waiting for the imam, right? So for the makmum is okay because the imam carries for you, but for imam and for someone praying by themselves, right, any random pauses in the prayer whereby there is no recitation that would nullify your prayer. You're not supposed to just stand there and be idle in your prayer <laughs> like this, tengah -tengah, like daydreaming or whatever. The moment you do that, your prayer if you do, if it's too long. Your prayer batal. Your prayer sheet comes invalid. If the Imam forgets doa kuno and the Imam is long doa kuno and legs behind by more than two rukun, is that a valid excuse? No, it's not a valid excuse because doa kuno is not wajib. 
Uh, doa kunut is sunnah. Right, so the makmum actually shouldn't be doing it. And if the makmum wants to do the doa, doa kunut, knowing the imam will not do shudud sahwi, this imam will, my, like your brother or whatever, you know lah, he will not do doa kunut, he will not do shudud sahwi, you know he will just salam after that. So you want to get a doa kunut in, do a short one. Right, so the, uh, Rabbi, you, you, you go, uh, Allahumma arhamni, ya arhamma rahimin, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, muhammini wa alayhi wa sallam, muhammini wa alayhi wa sallam, sujud. Okay? Uh, but if you, if you lag behind by two rukuns on a sunnah, not valid. So only so I, I only mentioned once in the scenario Fatiha. The only scenario here is Fatiha, because your only other wajib rukun kauli that means the rukun of what you have to recite is Tahiyah, and after Tahiyah there is no two rukuns because Tahiyah is your last rukun. <laughs> so even if you read, read Tahiyah for super long and the Imam da da salams go off already, between Tahiyah and the end of the prayer is one rukun. So it's not possible for you to lag behind by two rukuns. It's only one more rukun, salam. The first tahiyah is sunnah. Correct. So the only rukun that can cause you to be lagging is fatiha. The only rukun that can cause you to be lagging. There's no other rukun that will cause you to be lagging. And only fatiha can cause you. Because all the other rukuns, you're only, allow, you're, you're only uh, re- required to hold it for tumat nina. Correct? So there's, there shouldn't be any other reason why you're lagging. Except fatiha. That's the only time you're going to be lagging enough to, cut, to actually be more than two rukuns. Everything else, that, 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 that is, it's, not, it's not possible for you to be lagging more than two rukuns unless you are daydreaming. Lah. <laughs> and then that one is no excuse. Lah. Or if you're reading a lot of du'as, which is why same thing also, people who want to do du'as in their sujud, right, don't do it when you're in jama'ah. Right, do your du'as in sujud in sunnas. Right, why are you doing your du'as in sujud during, during jama'ah? Especially if you're a ma'mum. Right, if you're a ma'mum, uh, f- it, is, it is more virtuous on you to be together with the imam. The imam move, you move. The imam move, you move. The imam move, you move. Right? So you, it is not virtuous for the ma'mum to hold a position for sunnah. It's not. Right? So so the ma'mum finish fatiha. Right? The ma'mum begins reading the surah, for example. Eh? And then the imam ruko. The ma'mum to stop her surah and continue with the imam. It is not virtuous for the ma'mum to continue her surah and lag behind the imam when the imam already, already moved. It's more virtuous for the ma'mum to move the, right after the imam moves. So, so it's, 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 it's also, you know, uh, like, like you said, a, a, a lack of knowledge in our society when people hold sujuds and the imam dah naik dah. The imam has already gotten up from the sujud. The imam already sitting down doing tahiyah already. And the ma'mum still in sujud, holding the sujud. No, ma'mum, get up. Like, Mama must get up. Mama want to do long sujud, go and do in sunnahs. Like, don't do it during, during uh, wajib. Like, because the imam is not doing it. Same thing for the imam. Imam want to hold long sujud, do in sunnahs. Because you don't know who of your ma'mum is in a hurry. Uh, because it is more virtuous to be considerate to the ma'mum. Uh, because they are, amongst the ma'mum, they are mothers, they are working adults, they are old people, they are young ones, you know, who are just beginning to pray, children, whatsoever. Imam... For the sunnah of Rasulullah Wasallam to make the wajib prayer um, uh, not not fast, right? But this it is said to be it is it is focused. Right? So in a sense that he, you do what is needed and you move, and you do what is needed and you move, do what is needed and you move. Right? But you don't actually um, for for wajib prayer for fardu prayers, but you don't actually hold a position for so long because your ma'mum you don't know what their state what what what, what they're going through. So if a ma'mum has to run off and go back to work, and new imam holding sujud too long, oh imam, you're being, you're being inconsiderate. And that is uh, from a hadith of Rasulullah Alaihi Wasallam when Sayyidina Mu'az was praying, he was, was imam of over people in one masjid uh, outside of Medina. And Sayyidina Mu'az began by reciting Surah Baqarah in his fardu prayer. It's a fardu prayer. Surah Baqarah he began reading. So there was a farmer who was there like, who came into the, into the masjid to get jama'ah. I began the prayer. And found the imam reading surah Baqarah. So he mufaraqa, right? he broke away from the jama'ah and he continued the prayer. Sayyidina Mu'az found out about it and he got upset with the person saying that that person is a hypocrite. Right? And the news reached Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah called both of them to him, Sayyidina Mu'az and the, the farmer. Right? And he said, you know, what happened? And the farmer said, Ya Rasulullah, I came to the masjid to pray jama'ah and uh, the imam began reading surah baqarah i can't wait for surah baqarah to end i have to get back to my to my work so i broke apart and i continued my prayer and i went back to work and then muaz said ya rasulullah he's a hypocrite 
and then and then so that 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 If you, and then said to him, if you are you are imam, read what is short, and then finish the prayer. But if you're praying by yourself, sunnah, then read whatever you want to read. Go and long long so you can. Ah, uh, mashallah. Eh? So, so um, be very careful. Imam and makmum, both do not hold a position longer than necessary, right? and continue for wajib for 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 wajib prayers. For sunnah prayers, whatever you want to do. <laughs> mashallah. Okay. Um, mashallah. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Actually, ten twenty four. Um, I want to mention one more thing about the masbuk, eh? just to clarify. Uh, a very, it's a it's a misconception of society. And I want to clarify. How? What does it mean to add on more rakaats? Okay, okay. Continuing after imam, or oh, adding, make I'm making up, eh? making up rakaats after imam. The okay, rule, the rule, is that. How ever many rakaats you get with the imam, I, I'll give an example in a while. Let me just put the 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 qaida first. I'll put the principle first. How many rakaats you how how however many rakaats you get with the imam, right? Once the imam salams and finishes the prayer, and finishes the prayer, the prayer. You get up and continue from that number of rakats. I will give you an example, right? You are not doing. Uh, I'm gonna call it cut pace, eh? Of missed rakats. What does this mean? Example. You missed the first rakaat. Eh, nam. You missed the first two rakaat. The first and second rakaat of maghrib, for example. Okay. So which means that, and which means that you only got the third rakaat with the imam. Okay. So after the so so you you, you got you only got the rakaat of the imam, right? So after the imam has finished his salams, you know you get up for one more for two more rakaats, right? So once imam ends, you get up for two more rakaats. You are now on your second rakaat for maghrib. Therefore. You do tahya. Okay, now right, what is wrong, right, is when people think they are making up the first, the first rakat, and do not do the tahya. Right, so some people think it's a cut and paste. Which I didn't realize until I actually met some of my students who really thought it was a cut. You know, you miss the first two, right? So the first, the first rakah has to do tahiyah, second has tahiyah. So when they do one rakah with the imam and they get up for the second rakah, they think they are doing a cut pace from the first one. And in the sense, they are doing the first one now. No, you're not doing a cut pace. You're continuing the prayer. You're continuing the prayer. Right, so you finish one rakat with the imam. Now you're on your which rakat? Second, do a second rakat for maghrib, which means got tahiya. Okay, can understand? Right, so wherever you finish with the imam, right, for example, someone missed the first rakat of zohor, they played three rakats with the imam. So now after the third rakat, they get up. They're on their fourth rakat of zohor. You are not doing a cut pace of uh of the first rakat. Okay, you're doing your fourth rakat. Understand that? Uh, because I I even get questions from from my students who ask me that you know if I pray three with the imam then now I have to make up my first rakaat so after I sujud do I give salams? He says no, you're on your fourth rakaat. Why is it for you to do your tahiyah? 
But she said, but I done my tahiyah just now on my third rakaat of imam. You know, in your third rakaat of the imam. That's not count. It's a, it's a third rakaat. You need doing it because you're following the imam. Like your fourth rakaat is your fourth rakaat. You're supposed to do a tahiyah at the end of it. Like you're, not, you're not doing a cut and piece of the first rakaat. Okay? And so I understand it's a very important. It's a, it's a, I didn't realize it was a misconception until I had students ask me this question. I realized that people think that you're doing a cut and piece. You're not doing a cut and piece. <laughs> you're doing a continuation of your prayer. You need to be careful about that. Okay, alhamdulillah. Okay, it's 10 30. Um, inshallah, next week I will continue with the Sunnah uh, Rawatib. Anyway, I want to finish uh, this, this chapter. Let's go back to the, to the uh, PDF. Tamam. Okay, right, so I hope that one is clear on this part. Any question here, just text me. Eh? Um, to delay, so, so, to delay with two integrals without an excuse. Uh, without an excuse. If you have an excuse, you're given up to three long rukuns. If you have an excuse. Um, the intention of terminating the prayer by suspending is termination on a foreign action, meaning that you are that that you intend to terminate your prayer, uh, by something occurring, right? So when someone says when you come into the prayer, say okay, if my phone rings, I'm gonna uh terminate my prayer. I'm gonna batalkan my prayer. Your prayer already batal. Right? The moment you say if my phone rings, I'm gonna stop praying. You already stop praying already. The moment you say that, the moment you say, if, if the door, if, the, if the someone knocks the door, if the doorbell is, this, if, or if my husband comes home, I'm going to stop praying. You're not in prayer already. You cannot have a condition on your prayer that you're going to terminate it by something else. I cannot. Right? The moment you do that, dah batal. Right? And then doubting is termination. Right, so meaning doubting here meaning like meaning meaning going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth in your head. Should I should I bata? Should I not bata? Should I bata? Should I not bata? Should I bata? So there is no there is no condition that you put on yourself, but you're just going back and forth about should I should I not should I should I not should I should I not. The moment you do that, bata, <laughs> I am pretty really nullified. Right, you cannot, you cannot go back and forth. And so the moment the moment that that whisper comes to you, it could be from shaitan, you dismiss it. Sure, you said no. I'm I'm praying. <laughs> don't don't go back and forth. Should I? Should I not? Should I? Should I not? I see your phone ringing. You're thinking, you know, who's that? Eh? Should I? Should I battle or not? Should I battle or not? Should I battle or not? Da battle da. <laughs> the moment you go to that that over and over again, your prayer already terminated. Eh, Mashallah. Okay, let's read this part. Um, nam. Uh, nam. To complete two intercourse before the imam does invalidate the prayer. If one does, does so absentmindedly or in ignorance of his prohibition, it does not invalidate. If you are if you're ignorant or if you're absent-minded. But the prayer is not the rakat is not counted and he must do one more rakat because the rakat was not was not with the imam. Uh, after the imam finishes, eh? And then without an excuse means that um so without an excuse. Uh, so it is makro to lag behind the imam until he completed one integral. Because one does not break the prayer. Two does. Right? So if you snagger or if you on purpose lag behind the imam because you want to recite what else you want to recite for one ruko in makro. Okay, makro. And when you do a makro in Surah Jama'ah, you have now um, uh, forfeited the reward of Jama'ah. There's no more reward of Jama'ah. If you do a makro in Surah Jama'ah, <laughs> no reward of Jama'ah. <laughs> May Allah help us. Um, uh, it invalidates one prayer to lag behind the imam until he has completed two integrals completed meaning he moved into the third one right so for as long as he is in the second one you need to move already okay uh, so that's not like behind the imam if the imam bows and students up without uh, while while without excuse one has not yet bowed ruku, ruku, eh? it does not invalidate your prayer until the imam actually begins to move down into sujud right and then and you still have a ruku you're still standing Ah, uh, now you are behind by two full rukuns. Right, the imam dah ruko. The imam already stand up. Two rukun already, eh? You still okay if you still if you have not ruko yet. You need to ruko before the imam sujud. Ah, uh, so once the imam has moved into his sujud, that means he has finished two uh, rukun. You need to move already. Right before the imam moves into sujud. The moment you are still standing and the imam Allah akbar into, into sujud, ah, uh, then your prayer already uh, nullified if you have no good reason. Means no proper excuse. Okay, if to decide to break one's prayer, if such a th- and su- if such and such a thing happens, for example, phone ring, door door knock, whatsoever, regardless whether the event will definitely occur during the prayer or whether it may happen, 
So it's regardless of the event, whether it's going to happen or not. So you say, I will stop if Zaid enters. Regardless of who is it and where is it. <laughs> if you say that, your prayer already nullified. Okay? Whether or not Zaid is coming or not. <laughs> so you're gonna, if you say that, and even Zaid didn't even come, your prayer done nullified by you saying that. Um, not to know whether one has submitted or not means one hesitates in one's heart saying, should I stop intending prayer or should I continue? Should I stop? Should I continue? Uh, that kind of thing. Eh? So the mere thought of how it would be if one were to hesitate during the prayer is of no consequence. Rather, the occurrence of doubt that negates one's resolve and certainty is what is considered here. Uh, meaning that a whisper, could be from Shaitan, uh, a whisper saying that, eh, hey, your prayer battle ready. Then you're thinking, no lah, we got battle. Right? You're thinking, well, nothing happened to my prayer, why we got battle? Right? Um, you dismiss Shaitan. You dismiss Shaitan straight away. Go away <laughs> and then you continue your prayer. Right? But if you allow the whispers to continue and you go like, di batal, di batal, di batal, di batal. Am I batal? Am I, am I praying? Am I praying? Am I not praying? Am I still praying? Am I not praying? Am I not? And then the moment you do that, you have no more prayer already. You're gone. <laughs> Right? So you need to you need to shut up Shaitan. <laughs> he becomes to you, shut him off. Right? Don't don't hear his whispers. Right? Continue and pray. Uh, uh, and then your prayer sound. Right? But if the moment you you lie on Shaitan <laughs> or you, the moment you 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 give attention to Shaitan, your prayer nullify already. Don't give him any attention. Okay. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Okay, next um next lesson, inshallah, we're going to start our tip. The one I spent, I know I spent a long time on that point because I think it's it's very important because it happens to everybody. And that's why I spent a long time on that because it's, it's it's one of the really practical situations. Like eating food or drink in your prayer it happens, doesn't happen. But I think the Fatiha thing happens to every person. <laughs> you might meet an imam, but he's way too fast and you don't know what to do now. Then you're thinking, do I feature Fatiha? Do I not feature Fatiha? What should I do? <laughs> Right, and then so that's why I'm, I'm spending more time on that. So you can also uh, like tell people uh, if they're not aware. Like there's something also, mashallah. When I came back from Tarim, my mother as she asked me because she also always wondered. Uh, she never, she never actually learned this. She said she she always wondered. Like, do, do do I finish my fatiha or not finish my fatiha? <laughs> so I went to the whole fake about about it with her. And I said, oh, okay. <laughs> How can we never learn this? <laughs> it's because it's 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 complicated. It is. It can be, so maybe some some ustaz or in the past they would just say. Uh, you know, just just do one more card <laughs> because it's it's very complicated to try and figure it out whether you're mass book not mass book whatever you are. No, mashallah. Okay, I uh, will take just uh, like a few minutes break, two minutes break, three minutes break. Uh, inshallah, and we will continue our Arabic. Inshallah. Okay, is there a question? Um, been doing the making up rakaats wrongly all the while. How do I know how many to qada and also any advice for the for the qada because so many? Okay, okay. If you're doing the making up of rakaats wrongly, is it 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 basically is a matter of like is your mistake um is your mistake detrimental? So you see, if you don't do the first tahiyah, it's not detrimental because the first tahiyah is sunnah. But if you have been missing out your second tahiyya, ah, that's detrimental. Because second tahiyya is wajib. Alright? So if a person has been on their last raka'at, thinking it's their first raka'at, been doing after sujood, get up, salams, uh, without doing a tahiyya, then those prayers are not valid. Alright? But if a person has been missing the first tahiyya, so when they get up, they're like, okay, I'm on my first raka'at, but she did on the second. Uh, but then, so they didn't do tahiyya. It's okay. Because first tahiyah, sunnah. Alright, so you need to go and ask yourself, if you've been doing the masbuk thing wrong, um, have you been doing, have you been missing your, first, your, your, your second tahiyah or not? That's the only thing that will make your prayer not valid. Right? Beyond that, if you've been doing it wrong, it's a matter of you missing the first tahiyah. Because the only difference between, between, between what rakaats and even rakaats is the tahiyah. Correct? Uh, and then, so, so the only way you could have messed this up is that you missed the last tahiyah. Uh, that one, all those prayers, uh, tak sah. <laughs> like, it's not valid. Uh, but if you miss the first tahiyah, no problem. Uh, because uh, even if you miss it on purpose, that's not valid, invalid your prayer. Because it's sunnah. Okay. Okay, alhamdulillah. Let me, let me stop the recording first. Okay, just a few minutes. Let me just get set up the Arabic. So,